Well, you may be wondering while I'm smiling from ear to ear. It's not just because I get the stage to talk to you at the TEDx Breda, but actually also I'm happy I didn't end up naked here. And you may be wondering why, but I really had a hard time making decisions what to wear for this special occasion. I was in front of my closet, staring at it for like 20 minutes. Should I take the white one or the blue shirt? I had no clue. I had no clue. And when I realized this, I often face these challenges. Making subjective decisions is pretty difficult for me as a person being. If you give it a ranking, if, you, if the blue shirt is a four and the white shirt is a two, and you obviously go for the highest ranking, then for sure you take the blue shirt, right? But this is still rather subjective, because I may give the white shirt a two and this blue one a four, but you may give this one a one and the white shirt a five, right? And even for myself on a, on a different occasion, it would also change. So wouldn't it be great if you do it fact-based? There's no doubt about facts, right? If this shirt would get a clear indication of a ranking true to a fact, then it's much more easy to make the decision. So let me take you to an example. Who of you have ever bought a dress? I'm pretty sure there are some ladies in the room, so... Exactly. And my girlfriend did so too. She came back home, very proudly showing off a dress. Don't that look nice, Niels? Don't that look nice? I said, wow, you look amazing on this yellow dress. And she said, well, I just spent 100 euros on it. It was a very good decision. So I said, wow, okay. So how did you get it for 100 euros? Well, as you always told me, fact-based decision is very good and very nice. So what I did, my objective was to get it as cheap as possible. Right? I collected all the different facts. So in the Netherlands, I figured out all the stores on the internet. I checked out the price for each of them. And I figured out in Amsterdam, it's the cheapest one for 65 euros. But we are living in Breda, so she still had to get the dress to our place. So she said, well, again, I was looking at the different transportation options, how to get the dress to my place. So I could go by, by taxi, by car, by bus, by train, or a delivery service. And again, I collected all the facts of the cost, how to get it, and make the cheapest option. And it was 35 euros to go by train, this was the cheapest option. So in total this adds up to 100 euros. Wasn't that bad, right? So she actually was very clever. However, <laughs> me as a mathematician said, well, <laughs> there may be some things you have missed here. Because if I tell you that in Eindhoven, another city, the dress is 80 euros, more expensive, However, if you go back and forth by car for just 10 euros on fuel, in total you spent 90 euros on the dress. And, well, she wasn't that happy. <laughs> but she wasn't really stupid, actually, because if you look at the different options that you have, when first considering all the different stores, let's say a thousand stores in the Netherlands, there's one decision to make out of thousand options. Then there's another five options to know how to transport, right? So in total, there's 1,005 options. However, if you would take it as a whole big solution and puzzle at once, you would need to multiply the 1,000 times the five transportation options, and you have 5,000 different options. So it's already exponentially increasing. So it is not that... <coughs> And it's pretty clever to break up the puzzle into pieces if you can't handle uh, that amount of options, right? But actually, that's where the power of computers and especially mathematics come into place. Let me take you to an example. These kids. My girlfriend wasn't happy with my, my lesson that I told her. But these kids are. And why do you think so? Well, these three kids, what they have in common is they go to bed hungry every day, day in, day out. And if I tell you that these are not the only one, but there's almost an 800 million people around the world suffering from food, for the lack of food. And that's a really big problem, right? It's even as much as the population as Europe, 
it's almost 10% of the world population that is going to bed hungry every day. And the good thing is, there is big humanitarian organizations that is trying to help these people, trying to get the food distributing to those people in need. However, that's not an easy task. And actually, these organizations face exactly the same problem, or a similar problem, as my girlfriend did. It's a question where to buy the food and how to get it and to bring it to the final people in need. So let me take you through an example. Here we have Syria. Every people <coughs> is pretty actual at the moment, right? With the war going on, unfortunately, but there's really a lot of food assistance required there. And these people need some nutrients, like salt, oil, uh, uh, carbohydrates, energy, uh, water, and you need to get it to that person. And there are several products, actually, that can cover and that contain these nutrients. Then these products can be sourced from all over the world. So let's take an example here in Brazil. From Brazil, you need to ship it to Syria. And when zooming in into Syria, it's coming in at the port. From there, it needs to go to a warehouse from which the final distribution to the people will take place. And you need to get it there from the port. And you can see there's already quite some steps to be taken there. And now, if we pay attention to the bottom right, to the number of options that we will actually need to make a decision of, it will increase and increase. Because what if there are three different suppliers at each of the ports? There's 90 different ports around the world. And there's a three different transportation options into Syria. And when we zoom into Syria again, then actually there's not a single port, but there can be three or four different ports in the neighborhood. And pay attention to the number. We're already at seven, more than seven million options to go for. And then we have three different warehouses, and so on and so forth, and a transportation option to each of them. So we already have, already have a more than 40 million options to pick from to find the cheapest possible route to serve these people. That's pretty big, right? That's pretty big. And this is only a so-called binary, binary variable. It's a question whether to buy rice in Brazil or you take it from India and ship it to Syria. But you can also think of combinations. Well, 50% I take from India, maybe 20% from Indonesia, and the rest I source in Brazil. So we're making these combinations and the mixture out of these so-called food basket, how to compose your food basket to deliver to the kids, they need it. The number won't even fit anymore on the screen and it will grow rapidly. And then you cannot solve it by pencil and paper anymore. It really becomes a difficult challenge. And that's why we actually have mathematics in place. So even if you would consider in this square, every little cross represents a solution of this really big number that we just saw. So imagine all the crosses are just a solution. Now what the computer would do is it will compare them one by one. And even the fastest and the biggest computer on Earth that can, within one finger clip, compare two solutions, two options, would take years, decades, maybe a ages to solve this puzzle and to find the optimum solution. And where mathematics and especially algorithms are really good for is finding a good solution as quick as possible. It doesn't necessarily need to be the real optimum. Of course, we strive for that as mathematicians. But even if you get very close, it is very powerful to get there as quick as possible. And it's actually like a game. Because we try to be there, getting there as soon as possible. So imagine we start off here at the bottom, and up there the green dot, the little green dot, is the optimal solution. And we try to go there as fast as possible. And how does algorithm and mathematics do that? Well, we find our way and we bump into an area of which we think we cannot improve anymore. Like, if I, if I go back to the example of the dress, if I know I have a full solution, boat, transportation, and the price of the dress for 100 euros, and I would find at a different store a dress for 120 euros, then I don't need to consider the transport options anymore, right? Because you won't get it cheaper. So, and the computer is too stupid. It will just keep on comparing. Well, the algorithm will think, hey, 
I don't need to go in that direction anymore. I cannot be any better anymore. So you can simply exclude a lot of options. And that's the power of the algorithm. So it will keep on going, find another direction. Again, it will bump into a so-called dead end. It will change direction again. It will keep on looking, looking, searching for the path. And it's really like a game, right? And finally, you get close to the optimal solution in a relatively short time. And time is what matters, right? Because every day would count for these people in need. Because what does it actually mean, doing better on logistics here? Well, there's a lot of different costs involved for these organizations. Almost 75 up to 80% of the food distribution is literally going and absorbed by costs you're making at logistics side of life. So even if you would be able to spend, to save a little out of it, and if I tell you that just 25 cents is needed to give a kid a school meal for one day, then it can be pretty insane, right? Because these organizations are not profit-making organizations. They spend every money they can save on the distribution and on the logistic side of life and reinvest it into buying additional food. And finally, reach this happy kid. Isn't that really cool? By just with, with mathematics, trying to, yeah, serving this kid, getting his, his plate full of rice. I think that's pretty cool. But we're not there yet. So this is just an example into Syria. But what we are now actually doing is trying to take it to the next level. Because remember this number? Across the world, there's almost 800 million people suffering from food assistance. And they are spread all over the world. And if we take a look at the bigger picture, again, the integrated decision, not looking at it decision by decision, but all together, it becomes more complex and the number becomes even bigger. So it would more ask for mathematics to solve this puzzle. Because if I look at this example and you make it step by step, the decision, you would source everything in Brazil for Syria, then you won't be able to take that commodity anymore to Cameroon or to a different country. So you need to take a look at the picture as a whole. And if you do that, as said, there's even much more money involved in the big operation globally. So it would result in even more additional food supply. And finally, more happy kids in these suffering countries. That's really amazing. And so with mathematics, you can really make every euro donated by you more worth it. I think that's really powerful. So what I... What I try to inspire you today is actually that with mathematics you can save 10 euros on your dress. You can help pretty a lot of people in Syria. And maybe even make a very step, big step forward to the ultimate goal of zero hunger. Thank you. <laughs>